Today, we get reviews of the first mobile chip with 3DB cache, NVIDIA announces something big, AMD's next GPU gets teased, and a well-known former Linus Tech Tips employee comes forward. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, reviews have dropped for the Ryzen 9 7945H X3D, AMD's ultimate laptop CPU with 3D vCache. And in the review, we can see that the new chip is a beast of a CPU, but it's slightly worse than the non-X3D model in multi-core performance. But when it comes to gaming, the 7945H X3D is the clear winner. At 1080p, it completely crushes the competition. Then at 1440p, it still takes the lead, but just not by as much. And at 4K, most of these high-end CPUs perform very similarly, just because notebook GPUs aren't as powerful as desktops, so they end up becoming the bottleneck before the CPU. Either way, this is a very impressive part, and I think it shows just how far AMD has come with their 3D vCache technology, especially given AMD's great performance per watt. According to Notebook Check, quote, even with a fixed 80-watt power limit, the Ryzen is still faster than Intel's Core i9-13980HX at 150 watts. So yeah, if you're looking for a great gaming chip and a notebook, the 7945HX3D may be the CPU for you. But first, did you know that without video compression, to watch a 1080p video would require over a gigabit per second internet speeds? Yeah, that's just 1080p. And that's one of the things I learned with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the place where learning computer science isn't a chore, it's actually fun. And not just because you can learn how things like video video compression works, but also because they teach you by getting you to actually do it yourself with these fun and interactive puzzles. From things like AI and neural networks to how memory works, Brilliant is the ultimate place to learn all things computer science. I mean, there's a reason I use it myself, but don't just take my word for it because when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial, so there's really no reason not to at least give them a try. I love to use them myself, so I know you will too. Plus, get this, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off forever. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, NVIDIA officially announced DLSS 3.5, a new version of their upscaling tech that adds an AI-powered denoiser called ray reconstruction. As they explain in the video, when you use ray tracing in a scene, there are going to be holes left during the lighting pass. These holes require a denoiser to fill in. Basically, a denoiser looks at the rest of the pixels in a frame and across multiple frames to determine what needs to be in these holes. But using this can cause issues such as ghosting and even removing certain lighting effects, and they show some of the issues here. Then when you upscale, determining what goes where gets even harder. This is where DLSS 3.5 comes in. For one, DLSS 3.5 is trained on a whopping five times more data than 3.0, and an AI network is now used to denoise the image so they have far more images to go on to fill in the scene. This means DLSS 3.5 can make images even better than without it, because it includes that AI-powered denoiser. Not only that, but depending on the scene, DLSS 3.5 can get even more performance because you're replacing multiple denoisers with a single AI-powered model. So if all of this rings true, DLSS 3.5 is looking like a very nice upgrade. Finally, unlike DLSS 3, DLSS 3.5 works across all of NVIDIA's RTX GPUs, though the frame generation aspect of it is only for the 40 series. So far, only a few games have been announced to receive the new tech, but we can definitely definitely expect more to come soon. Next up, it looks like we're just a few days away from the release of AMD's next GPUs. So much so that at Gamescom, ASRock has a teaser set up at their booth. As you can see here, there are cardboard GPUs with a date for the reveal being August 26. Not only that, but it says on them RDNA 3. So we know that these GPUs are discrete GPUs and they're based on RDNA 3. So of course, RX 7000 cards, making the rumored 7800 XT and 7700 XT nearly guaranteed at this point. Not only that, but PowerColor tweeted out an image of a Hellhound GPU that has the hashtag GameOn and coming soon. And don't forget that PowerColor already dropped the ball by mistakenly releasing a marketing page for the 7800 XT. Not only that, but we know that AMD also teased a release just a few days ago. Basically, the company is finally gearing up to release their mid to high-end GPUs, finally bringing some much-needed competition to the market. 
And lastly for today, we have some big updates on the Linus Tech Tips controversy, more specifically on the former employee who made some very big accusations. If you haven't seen my other videos on it, why aren't you subscribed yet? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, now that you're subscribed, I'll quickly go over my last video on the topic. In it, a former employee discussed the fact that what Madison said in her tweets are what he remembers of the whole thing, though he doesn't have first-hand knowledge. Also, a meeting at Linus Tech Tips that was leaked around the time seems to have made it clear that Linus was aware of the situation. Well, in today's news, now Taryn, the longtime editor for Linus Tech Tips who left last year, has spoken out about the former employee. First, he wrote on X that he was the one who told Madison she needed more RAM. This corroborates a small part of her story where she mentioned needing more RAM, but it taking five months before she got it. Not only that, but he states in another tweet that while he did not witness anything else, she did tell him privately some of the things she mentioned a few days after quitting. And of the things she told him, her story has not changed. So this is yet another employee at least showing that her story has not changed. Next, an old video resurfaced of an employee explaining what happened during an interview with LTT. He calls me and he goes, oh, I completely forgot about her interview. And Linus is like, this question is stupid. This one's dumb. I don't want to ask this one. And then he puts, it, puts down the paper and he goes, all right, are you into bestiality? Do you watch bestiality? So yeah, it definitely seems like things aren't very professional at Linus Tech Tips to say the least. Finally, it looks like Linus Tech Tips is losing a ton of subscribers. The main channel looks to be down around 200,000 subscribers, and on the member's site, Floatplane, they've lost around 5,000 subscribers. So we're talking around $300,000 a year lost from Floatplane alone. At the end of the day, it's pretty clear that Linus Tech Tips has multiple problems on their hands. We'll just have to wait and see what ultimately happens to that investigation. So while that does it for today, are you hopeful that these allegations aren't true? Or do you think Linus Tech Tips is in serious trouble? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.